and we will replace the plastic anatomy and the dissections with the regular one, but we are complementing it. We are using, we are expanding our reaches, we are expanding our tools to teach anatomy better. So it, uh, you, you should think, we should all think that radiology is a very important tool for the anatomy teacher, a tool for the anatomy teacher to impart uh, spatial anatomy, functional anatomy, clinical importance. You, we can teach much better about Broca's uh, aphasia or Bernicke's aphasia from this structural connectivity images using uh, these imaging uh, techniques. With, with, if these, we have these in our hands. Now, uh, relevance of radiology in anatomy within CBM. Uh, we know CBM is our current uh, curriculum. So we know that the older concept is that we make students competent in anatomy, but the current CBM curriculum has the hallmark that we have to make them competent, not in anatomy, but for clinical practice. Okay, so when that comes, when that becomes our goal, when we refocus our goal, uh, interpreting normal imaging becomes a priority. The interpreting normal imaging becomes a, a, a natural priority when our uh, the, the goal of the IMG, Indian Medical Graduate, uh, is to make them equipped for clinical practice. So it is a normal, it is a normal, natural uh, component. So this is uh, what uh, quote that I saw. So, uh, current education methods aim to erase the road learning of pure factual method in favor of a broader understanding of the clinical relevance of anatomy. Okay, so our, our importance is on clinical relevance and so imaging becomes very important. This is a concept of integration that I found a very, very good definition of integration. Uh, I have highlighted the uh, important parts and important phrases in red. No department should forget that it is no more than a part of the whole which is responsible for the education of a whole student. That means we are not actually teaching the core anatomy, we are teaching the sound anatomical knowledge that will enable the student to do a better clinical practice. Okay, so when the focus changes, each of the topics that we teach, each of the points that we tell to our students, you should, you should actually go, uh, go through the same thing that, is this making our student a better anatomist or a better clinical practitioner? When we teach about one nerve supply, we should think, is this going to help him for a better clinical practice? Okay. When that comes to our understanding, we can actually refine what we are teaching. We will understand, we will start to reflect and we will start to get the insight that many of the topics that we teach are actually, may not be so much relevant for clinical practice. We will find that we are actually omitting some things that are actually relevant for clinical practice. Okay. So this understanding will come only if we on, uh, you know, uh, repeating this this phrase that is it going to be relevant for the clinical practice of this student? Okay, so that is that is the most important one. This definition was by Miller, who is a doyen of medical education and uh, who is a very good, uh, the great advocate of integration. Now, in the next few slides, I'm going to do, do a brief survey. It's not an extensive literature review, but I'll just. Uh, give you a stroll through uh, different instances of how radiology has been integrated in different places uh, in, in, into the uh, imaging curriculum. Now, when, when I go through these slides, I would want you to think about, reflect about how we are teaching in our country as a whole, in our CDMA curriculum uh, as, as such, or in our universities, or in our colleges. Okay? So, we need to have this whole perspective when I go through this, uh, a few instances where I illustrate on how uh, radiology is being incorporated in different parts of the world. Okay. I am really sorry that, yeah, can you just add that, uh, my image on the top right? Can you just cut that uh, top right, my image? It's not near, it's not near right? Okay. So, on the top right, I've, I've shown you the location of where these uh, studies or the pictures I've taken from. This is an instance from the University of Chicago and this is a paper which came in medical research. They show that they can directly correlate cadaveric teaching with imaging. So, you can see how the teacher is correlating imaging, okay, imaging here and uh, textbook pictures with cadaveric dissection. See how much, don't think it from a teacher's point of view, think from that student's point of view. How much is that student going to get the relevance of understanding that gross anatomical dissection when he is taught like that? Okay, so that, that was one instance from University of Chicago. This is a paper uh, from Canada, this was in the past 2000. 
2002, right? This is a survey report. In fact, they say that they have involved the radiologists into an activity team. Radiologists are either appointed into 50% of
you know, it, we were just awestruck and inspired after that course. So if you get any chance and if you're interested in your academy, you have to attend one of this course. This is a 20 year course, that means they are doing that for the last 20 years. Okay. So uh, this is a, something that we created, I have a colleague of Rashtrapi here, we actually marked out, this is an ongoing project. This is done with the Government Inter College Program, where I was working for the last four years, and SEK Industry Program, and also Triple IT Hyderabad, which is an uh, IT institution, uh, engineering institution. Uh, this is now part of the ongoing project. In here we have a, a, a brain uh, section image, uh, I mean, uh, a gross anatomy brain image, and these are sections we all know. This is uh, axial, sagittal, and coronal, and the amount of anatomy that we can teach with this. When we, when we show that, it's going to be very, very very much relevant for the students. And we can go through any of these things. If you go into a radiology posting or radiology workstation, you can know without cutting in any part of the brain, you can actually go through the YO brain by going through any of these slices. It helps us to teach a lot. It's a very important teaching tool. Now our actual project was to create 3D models of these. Okay, this was the part of our project. This is a ventricle model that we have created. You can see every minor recess that we teach, the supraoptic recess, the infundibular recess, okay, the pioneer recess, the aqueduct, okay, everything was visualized and uh, our project is actually creating a virtual reality model. Okay, this project is ongoing. We are creating more and more modules and we can actually rotate all this in virtual reality and you can see this with 3D glasses, just like you see a 3D movie. And we can, as a teacher, we can cut through this in any sections and you can see the cut surfaces. Just imagine how we are currently teaching lateral ventricle uh, with just uh, chalk and board diagrams. Chalk and board diagrams has its importance, it's extremely irrelevant, but just think how much more of spatial anatomy we can teach in this. So, building academic resources is also a very important goal. Now, anatomy and stable and sector table, you have seen a small version of this in the Elsevier counter uh, in our. Uh, in our the, the place where breakfast was served. So we saw that, and uh, these are anatomy and sector tables, and we are very fortunate that next month itself we have a, uh, a seminar by uh, Dr. Kumar Sathirkaji uh, where anatomy will be demonstrated on how neuroanatomy and uh, uh, gross anatomy and clinical anatomy can be taught with anatomy and uh, uh, anatomy. So uh, what, what this is being done is radiological images are being used to create a virtual cadaver on which we can do dissections or sections and with that we can increase uh, a student's understanding. Okay, this was a study in medical science educator from uh, Cleveland Clinic uh, which showed and you can go outside and not put that study as such. Now we should also be more, uh, I mean less technophobic. You can add any, you should actually don't fear technology to, in the current era. Just like you don't fear uh, technology to make a money transfer now to book a flight ticket, just like that, we should not be uh, technophobic in teaching anatomy too, because it's going to make a big impact for students. So this was one instance I found from uh, University of Central Florida. They have added a digital anatomy table. Uh, this, is the, this was a very interesting point I found. They have a CT scan collaboration, that means they actually do CT of every cadaver that they obtain. And why they do dissection? They see, they correlate with the CT. Each of the students has a, each of the tables has, the dissection tables has a, 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 a screen projected into it. And they can, they can use that to learn uh, uh, CT scan collaboration. Okay, to, to understand totally CT with uh, the anatomy dissection that they are doing. So, uh, we have to embrace technology also. So, there, there have also been core administrative or academic changes in the world. These are two websites that I've taken. One is Via Wildcornel Medicine, the next is University of Massachusetts. You can see in both of these, under the Department of Radiology, you have the Division of Anatomy. Anatomy is under the Department of Radiology. If you go to Stanford also, uh, it is Division of Anatomy under the Department of Surgery. Basically, anatomy and radiology are, anatomy, radiology and surgery are all allied subjects. You should understand that 100 years back, uh, you, you may, may not have this distinction. They will all be the same, maybe 50 years back, but now, now, now they are all, all being separated into disciplines, but you should know the link between these two, why we teach anatomy, that's the point. So, uh, these universities have moved on to integrating this, and that is explicitly shown in their websites. Uh, 
I, I highlight, or I think you can't read it, I just read it out. Under the division of translation, anatomy is written. Anatomy and radiology have closely aligned subject matters. The collaboration is a natural one. The collaboration is a natural one. So, uh, they are explicitly shown in, in according to their administrative changes also. So, now I will conclude with a few suggestions, basically my personal opinions, may be different. And about, uh, I want to, at the outset, I want to say that radiology may be integrated in different colleges. I know AIMS has uh, radiology integration at different levels, JITMAR has, but that may not be the situation when we consider the whole country or the anatomy practice in the whole country. So, these are some personal opinions from me. Uh, one is we have to have strong collaborations with the radiology department. Okay, strong collaborations. Not a mainstay collaboration, strong collaboration from the research point of view as well as teaching point of view. Encourage inclusion in postgraduate education of anatomy. Not just small postings, but more relevant postings. MD thesis can be encouraged, should be encouraged more to include uh, radiology. Don't think that it is a radiology thesis. No. Uh, if it is a, a, having a normal anatomy component, MD thesis should be encouraged to include an, uh, radiology components. PhD programs should be encouraged to include radiology components. Radiology anatomy combined CMEs or courses should be included, just like what we saw in the UCL example. They have been conducting that for every year for 20 years. Okay, that, that's been conducted by some of the eminent scientists. So just like that, we have to conduct uh, combined CMEs, PhD sessions, courses, and even update meetings. Everything is actually being more and more updated, more and more Newer knowledge is being uh, known about classical anatomical structures that we thought will not uh, evolve. We thought more understanding is not possible for anatomy. That's not the case now. Uh, CBME revision. Okay, CBME is, uh, as, I, as I know, as I understand, CBME is not static. It, it has to be evolved. It should be revised. And I'll come to that in the next slide. Uh, we should have explicit inclusion of radiological anatomy competencies. Not only X-rays, but CT, MRI, and ultrasound, especially ultrasound, especially for visceral anatomy. Uh, research, postgraduate and undergraduate research should be encouraged to incorporate radiology. Now, uh, other thing is obviously we need workstations, we need tech support, and we need IT support for that. Training sessions for anatomists. Anatomists can be and should be trained. There are actually papers where anatomy teachers they themselves have uh, they themselves teach ultrasound. Uh, just students, okay? We don't actually need a radiology if we are properly trained, if, if we are uh, have a clinical background. Blended format is recommended. Never think that we should replace traditional anatomy with a radiological anatomy. That will that will be counterproductive. That will uh, hit us back. We should actually blend these both. Correlate, uh, correlate always anatomy, traditional anatomy and radiological anatomy. Classical dissection should be correlated with the radiology. Anatomy. Include imaging in student assessments. That, that's, this will be the tough part. What we have mostly in our, what I've seen is mostly we include a, 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 an X-ray only. Okay, but more more explicit inclusion of assessment, both in theory and in practical, is needed uh, when we include uh, radiology into curriculum. Because unless we include it in assessments, students are not going to learn. Obviously, we are all went through. They we just get to be. We learn only the things that we get on the forms. So we have to include that in the assessments also. Now this is, uh, as a conclusion, a slide. This is, uh, you can see this, uh, get this paper from medical teacher. It's an elaborate article. Medical teacher always has a, a section called 12 tips. Okay, 12 tips. So these are 12 tips that are included. Uh, the 12 tips are develop and curate a bank of anatomized images, invest in suitable resources, carefully select and optimize images. Okay, these are the imaging tips. For, for so for doing that, we need tech support, IT support, a good collaboration with the radiology. Clinical tips. Radiology should not be wrote. It should be strongly rooted in clinical background. We have to include uh, clinical context. We have to integrate radiologists and other diagnostic specialists in teaching anatomy. Familiarize students with the most appropriate investigation techniques for the anatomical region that they are going to learn. Highlight differences in anatomical and clinical terminology. Okay, uh, when, I, when I was doing post-graduation, I went to ultrasound and they were telling this uh, uh, term called superficial femoral artery. I was thinking, oh, what is that? Superficial, we, not, we have never heard that. We have never heard only femoral artery and profit of uh, femoral artery. Okay, so femoral artery in radiology terms, they call it superficial femoral artery. Okay, so just like that, we have uh, so many things with another name in clinics. Okay, you might have came to the situation if you collaborate with. So that's all with uh, radiologists. 
So that is also important. You can highlight the difference. And maybe that will in future uh, make a common terminology. We have a uh, FCAT, uh, uh, a common anatomical terminology for anatomists. That can be, you know, have a concurrence with the clinical terminology and obviously avoid confusions as uh, decades pass by. And educational tips, we can promote more three-dimensional visualization, integrate radiology into teaching resources, resources, outcomes and assessments, engage students by involving them in creating uh, resources, embrace technology and understand uh, that radiology resources will not always be appropriate. Okay? Will not. You cannot obviously teach everything with radiology, but you need to exactly add the correct ingredients, just like you make a dish. You cannot add anything uh, to it. You need to wisely and uh, you know, with your insight and wisdom, you need to add the appropriate components to give them the best uh, recipe. Now coming to our reality, this is our stinky make a Okay, from the entire format I for not nine competencies, explicitly that I included 12 radiology competencies. I personally don't think that is sufficient. Okay, you, uh, there may be difference of opinions, uh, but these are the ones that I've, I've just screenshot. Uh, upper limb, they have said identify the bones and joints of upper limb. Okay, next is identify the structures you see on a plain x ray chest, identify and describe the invading swallow, a plain x ray skull. Plain X-ray cervical spine, paranasal sinuses. Anatomical root used for carotid angiogram and vertebral angiogram. Identify anatomical structures in carotid angiogram and vertebral angiogram. I, I see obvious omissions here. Example, they have not included the CT of the skull, the CT of the brain, which is how you know that after a trauma or a, you consider a stroke, the first thing that you can do in a peripheral setup is obtain a non contrast CT, but that is not explicitly shown in the CVME objectives. So, I, I think there may be voids. So, we may have to think whether the CVME curriculum is sound or we may need to recommend revisions for it. Now, these are the rest. Uh, cross sections at the level T8, T10 and L1, the transpilot plate. mid the section of male and female pelvis. Uh, bones and joints of the lower level. I see only bones and joints in, in radiology uh, competencies. We can't have actually more. Uh, next is uh, identify plain X ray abdomen, varium solo, varium knee, varium lima, polycystography, IDP, hysterosalpingography. You don't see ultrasound there. Hysterosalpingography is there. If you think from a basic practitioner's point of view, you may need to know ultrasound more than hysterosalpingography. Okay, so, uh, these are some things that I, I think they, they may have gone a little more into specialist category more than from a, a basic uh, medical practitioner category. So, Obviously, I, I feel my personal opinion is CVD curriculum radiology component needs to be revised. So if we just compare with the ultrasound curriculum that I have included, they have shown to demonstrate actylus tendon. They have shown to demonstrate the heart chambers. Okay. I don't think these are impossible to be integrated into our curriculum. These are possible, but we need to have that vision. We need to have that you know, motivation to, to change. We need to have that willpower uh, to change and we need to have a team uh, with the radiologist. Uh, to correlate all those things and know the exact points where it can uh, extend our method of teaching and everything. So these are all, uh, the thoughts that came into my mind. Are not at all complete, and uh, I, I uh, welcome any suggestions or any thoughts from your side. for your uh, illuminating, impressive and informative uh, deliberation is really to have elaborated, ex elucidated and explicated all the tenets, uh, particularly showing how living anatomy is gaining importance and where is, uh, how the radiological anatomy is going to be a linchpin in the success of this whole teaching learning process of anatomy. And uh, I will request my Co chairpersons to have their comments. Let's start. Very nice presentation. So, uh, you have given a very important new updates regarding the radiological anatomy. But regarding
regarding the CBME pattern, how the how much time is devoted, how much time is given for the first year student to uh, to learn everything, can it be included such an uh, updated knowledge? They have, uh, uh, I think they haven't uh, sufficient time to cover all the syllabus and we. At what level we can include this, uh, these things? First of all, they are to know the basic things and uh, time interval given to them is uh, limited. The, these things they cannot be covered, I think so. They are to read three subjects and the time limit is there and how they, that can be included. That should also be taken care of, I think. Yes, rightly said because it needs a uh, collaboration with the radiologist and we should sit together with a positive approach, positive mind because it is now all about the early clinical exposure, clinically oriented and that practical relevance point, clinical relevance that will come but how it can be adjusted within a short span of time that they should have this. So that can be done definitely, it should be framed accordingly, it should be more structured way. so that is important. So I would like to have comments from our speaking Good morning to all. Thanks, Dr. Ravi, for your nice introduction. My uh, question or thought is that with so much of technology uses in the anatomy, will not lose the flavor of the
we should go ahead with that. And it is the need of the hour that we have to integrate with others which are it as well. Thank you very much. So we are uh, having an inaugural session right now, I think. So I have an input before we yes, end this session. Yeah, yeah. uh, Actually, sir, I have three or, four, three or four points to say. Number one, I would like to share the practice in our institute. At the end of every practice, every extremity that we take, we take a session of radiological anatomy encompassing all aspects of that particular area. So that has been always a practice. So radiologists come to our department and they take that as a mandatory session at the end of every extremity. So that is the beginning. Talking about the CBOB curriculum, we as anatomists are looking only on phase one. But they are looking at phase 3 also, where the students are going to radio diagnosis department. So whatever is left here, it has been covered for the students there. It is an ongoing process. Every year things are building up. And another thing as ma'am said, value added courses is a very, very big opportunity where we can definitely invite our colleagues. And we can create courses where our students can go and act. That is very important for NAC accreditation also. And regarding the uh, feedback, they are inviting feedbacks. If you give them feedbacks, they are making changes every year in the curriculum. Regular meetings are going on. So I think it becomes our duty that we give feedback to NMC also if we require any change. Thank you. And last comment from Sir. The only point I would just like to add since the last that we should rather we must teach radiological anatomy. How? As applied anatomy. At the end of the lecture, we are including applied anatomy. And that's a crux part. And in that very way, it should be added. It should be added. And it must be added. And I have seen, because I have been practicing radiological anatomy for many, many years. At KGMC, we have got CT scan gallery, MRI gallery, ultrasound lab. And we teach them, we take regular classes. And the students are very much interested in that. So my only humble suggestion is, that it must be included in a way as applied anatomy we have. And if we do like that, I suppose we will become clean ones, which we are trying to. Because this term, to my mind, clinical anatomy should not be there. Why? Determining one. No physician cause I am a clinical physician. No surgeon's cause I am a clinical surgeon. So why we are calling ourselves clinical anatomists? We are clinical. Anatomy is clinical. As simple as simple. Therefore, this term should not be there. Whatever we do, even if we are talking about a cell, it is important from the point of view of patient. Every point of the anatomy is important, clinical. So it is a clinical anatomy. So it is anatomy and just like physicians and surgeons, we are also anatomists. And we are doing our research. And many times they have seen, I, last time only, yesterday only, I saw in PGI, Lucknow. There is a department known by the name of Maternal and Reproductive Health. So their pediatrician, gynecologist, they are doing what? Amnesthesis. Simply that they are doing. And they are providing replacement of the blood, transfusion of the blood. So point is, those clinical persons, they are they have become diagnosticians. So why we are thinking about ourselves that we are not clinical? We are. So with these ten terms, I just like to add that just like this applied anatomy, we should be teaching the diagnostic anatomy, which is our utmost significance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your brilliant, insightful, and thought-provoking words. And I think we should conclude this session now. Uh, we can thank you, the Doris, and thank you, Chair Coach, and thank you, audience, for joining very interactive and lively. Thank you all. Thank you, sir, for enlightening us with such a great presentation. Now I would like to request Dr. Sanjeev Jain, sir. Sir, uh, uh, sorry to disturb this, this time. We will provide all the certificates uh, after the inaugural session.